Okay. Let's get started. I think uh, more people will join us as we go along. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us wherever you are. We see some names uh, 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 as Chicago Bulls alum from not just China, but also other countries. Uh, even though it's a holiday, thank you for taking the time. And we also have the pleasure of uh, inviting our Chicago Bulls alum, Elaine Shou, to share with us her expertise on public relations. My name is Cindy Zhao. I'm uh, chairing the B Chicago Bulls Alumni Club of China in Shanghai. Uh, and part of the reason we wanted to uh, learn from Elaine on communications and public relations is because part of my job is to help uh, fund managers raise capital from overseas. And uh, communication is really, really cr critical to make it successful. So um, just a brief introduction of Elaine. Uh, Elaine graduated from Chicago Booth, uh, the executive program, and she has been working in public relations for uh, pretty much all her career. Uh, and most of her, her career are with Ruda Finn. So she's really an expert and has served many, many famous clients in reputation management, brand building, and uh, crisis management. I think, uh, you know, Elaine can give us a more relevant uh, introduction of her background in her industry. But what I will add is Elaine is also a very powerful woman. <laughs> she has a very busy career and also uh, has three kids. Uh, I don't know how she does it, but uh, she's doing a wonderful job. So Elaine, why I'm going to give it to you and you can also give, give everyone an introduction of yourself. Okay. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. And thank you for uh, every, everyone attending this session in the Saturday afternoon. Um, so uh, very quickly today, we're going to talk about what PR can do in a controversial world because the world has changed significantly in the past years. So um, there will be different sectors. The first one is about um, why I'm here talking about this. So it's about me. The second part is really um, a fundamentals of PR because many people, including my husband, my husband also graduated from University of Chicago AXT program. And he even doesn't understand what PR is, what PR can do. So I will spend a little bit time in talking about what PR can do. Then we consider it a advanced course and we will talk about why PR is extremely important in today's world. Okay, so what, uh, um, first I'm gonna spend a little bit time on who am I, what, I, uh, which comp uh, what kind of company I work for. I graduated from AXP6. At that time, um, the uh, AXP program was still in Singapore. Now I moved to uh, Hong Kong. I have been in PR industry for more than 20 years. Um, so I've worked on different sectors and different industries. Right now, I'm the head of Ruda Fing, which is one of the biggest PR agency. Uh, I'm the head of Asia Pacific, uh, running operation across India, China, um, Southeast Asia, as well as um, um, uh, North, North Asia. So I'm also uh, directly running Ruda Fing China, uh, Greater China. And uh, I've been awarded as agency head of the year by PR Awards Asia. And uh, the agency has been awarded as Greater China Consultancy of the Year many times. So it's, it's quite a um, outstanding agency. So this is how you spell it. Um, Rudolfin sounds like a legal firm, but literally it's a PR firm. So it's pretty big. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on company introduction, but just let you know, this is the only agency that we call dual headquarters. That means we consider Shanghai and New York as the two headquarters of the agency given today's economic boom. And then if you look at uh, our performance in the market, um, this is a R3 um, um, biannual research and it's conducted by R3, which is a third party agency. So we are, we were definitely one of the best in all the different segments 
and uh, in agency performance, which is the client appraisal, we're always number one. And that's our client. You will see a lot of the names. And uh, actually, um, different from big agencies, we are big agency, but we are family owned independent agency and that we choose our clients very carefully. So actually you will see we focus on certain sectors and go very deep to be um, the sector specialized agencies. For instance, uh, we have very, very famous uh, a considered the top agency for luxury auto and also the top agency for travel and tourism as well as um, uh, a beauty healthcare. So these are the sectors we're very famous for. Now that's all about our agency. Um, now let's go to the interesting part. What is PR? And uh, many people ask me this question. Uh, and then the follow-up question is also, oh, so you are doing advertising. So let me clarify for um, that PR is different from advertising. Advertising in the past is usually considered paid. You pay the media they place the advertising on their um, newspaper or on their screen TV. And they are not supposed to change your content because you pay for it. Um, PR is different. PR is try to engage third parties. So they talk about you. Okay, and there are a lot of different ways, different channels you can do. And there are different definitions by a lot of universities, a lot of organizations. But let's try to make it simple. Um, in in Rudolfin, we say public relations is perception management. Manage how people think about you. Okay, so that's the perception. So the perception could be perception about companies, about products, about service, about countries, about cities or tourism destinations, about the president about everything. So as long as you're managing the perception, which means how people think about you, you are doing public relations. Okay, so there are many things PR can do and we try to streamline. We say PR only do three things. The first thing is create new perceptions when there is none perception, non existing perception in market. So you create one. Second, if you don't have the preferred perception, you're doing everything to change it. And the third, when you have existing perceptions in your favor, you want it to continue. You do public relations to reinforce the correct and existing perceptions. So to, just to make it simple, you only have three. Uh, I begin to see questions coming in, okay? I will answer them when I think it's appropriate time. The first question, I take notes, okay? So for all those perceptions, very different from advertising. Advertising is slogan, video, impact, TV commercials. And uh, for a PR, you need a lot of information and many times it's repeated. Second, you need a third party to give very credible endorsements. Third, you need to use very flexible communication channels. That's why we all believe that this age, social media age, is pretty much in our favor. And the last, PR needs clear target audience. For instance, it's targeted at kids or kids' family. It's targeted at the L, uh, uh, AS seniors. So you don't do general things, okay? Um, there is the one question here. How long is the timeline we're looking at if you want to create or change perceptions? Um, this is a very genetic question. I can only give you a genetic answer. It depends, okay? One very big accident could change the perception of a company if you don't handle it well immediately. I'll give some less, uh, especially in today's social media floods everything. I'll give you some case studies very soon. And uh, um, so, so it's, it's really about the occasion, the opportunity and how you use it. So we say PR doing three different things and with a different approach from advertising. 
I try to give you some typical PR works, okay? That you know what we are doing every day. The first one is corporate communication, which is about the company's reputation. The typical work, including reputation management, media relations, media relation means you talk to media, they publicize stories, TV interviews, you know, uh, media in-depth coverages and all this, so on, so on. Government relations change the government's attitude towards you. For instance, today, that Rudolfing is the PR agency of Huawei in America. We just take it over last, we just took it over last year from another big agency. One of our major tasks is to change the stakeholder, including government's attitudes toward Huawei that's called government relations. CSR is corporate social uh, responsibility, which is means a lot of use very familiar with sustainability, environmental friendly. In the US and in the Europe in the past years, they called purpose communication. Every company has a purpose above making money, okay? So in China and Asia, it's still pretty much called corporate social responsibilities. Crisis management, which is my favorite part, not the favorite part of many big companies, but that's my favorite part, because a lot of PR work has routines and crisis management does not, okay? So every case is unique. And among them also has some special program called CEO positioning or profiling, try to build a CEO who represents the image of the company. I know today talking about Jack Ma uh, might have a different meaning from years ago, but he did well in CEO positioning. Today, if you go to the West, you talk about China CEOs, he probably ranked the most liked ones, okay? A much, much, much above all the other China CEOs. So in terms of the CEO positioning, profiling, he's doing great. CEO positioning is a huge part of corporate communications in outside of, outside of um, uh, China, especially in, the, in Europe and in America, because the general public believe the CEO stands for the company, what, does, what the CEO looks like, what the CEO believes, will be the belief of the company, will build that company. This is very different from Chinese companies. So one of the challenge I face, helping Chinese company going abroad is their top management. Either they are not good at talking to the press or they are unwilling to show in front of the media. I understand there are a lot of different reasons behind, but this is an area why Chinese SOEs face challenges when they want to convince local general public of the um, United States or of Europe companies, countries that we are here doing good for you. From their perspective, I cannot even see a face of the company and how should I believe you, okay? Investor relations um, is another very specific part, which means um, relations, um, media communications for listed companies because it's a highly regulated areas. There are very specialized agencies doing that. Understand what can discuss, what cannot be mentioned on the media before when, okay? So this is another a very specific part. All these fall under um, the PR uh, category called corporate communications. The second very big chart is consumer communications. Okay, different from corporate work. Now we talk about product launches, media relations, awards and ceremonies, a lot of events. If you look at the photos here on the right, this is today Audi's booth in Shanghai Auto Show. Okay, the Shanghai Auto Show is going to take place in about two weeks. So everything's already building up in Shanghai um, International Exhibition Center. So this is typical PR work called exhibition and events. Then uh, celebrity marketing. We hire a lot of celebrities to, to speak for the, um, for the brands, like Andy Liu attend, uh, attend Party Tank's work and many celebrities attend different work. So that's celebrity marketing. And celebrity marketing has evolved over the years. Then you begin to see a lot of product placements. 
You see this Aston Martin, which is also our client. Aston Martin featured in um, James Bond movie. So Aston Martin is a very interesting um, automobile, for, auto, uh, auto brand. Now every time the James Bond movie launch, they will sell very well. So that's what we call product placement. It's quite popular today in China you know, movie industry. Then you also have social media seeding. One of the, you, you all know that the Little Red Book, Xiaohongshu Little Red Book is famous for seeding. And there are a lot of short videos from TikTok to Bilibili to um, YouTube. So there are many, many short videos today and it's become a major part of the consumer communications. And sometimes we segment PR work differently because some of the industry are so specific that need uh, special uh, know-how and knowledge. For instance, auto industry, it's very, uh, it can be technical driven. So auto, luxury, um, it has a very different style. You meet the people who are doing luxury PR, you know immediately they are in that industry, so luxury. Healthcare, especially product um, communication, require a lot of pharmaceutical medicine uh, know-how, knowledge, and that has a big learning curve. So you see, this is by industry, this part is by industry. And so the industry require a lot of in-depth knowledge. But sometimes some of the scope of service, the sectors also um, require a lot of in, uh, knowledge. Government relations is usually very specific. Government relations, a lot of times, is not about what to do, it's about who, who you know, okay? So lobbying become a special part of the government relations. Then internal communications, sometimes it can be even allocated to HR department because it's about how to encourage and align your staff rather than um, the external, uh, external target audience. Crisis management is very special, usually handled only by senior executives. They require a lot of knowledge, experience. And product placement, I just mentioned, uh, put in movie. Actually, it's very skillful. Huh? How many products can be, which products should be um, seed into different, which movies, how to choose the celebrities, how to choose the product. And each product should appear how many times because you want people to remember your product without thinking, ah, advertising, I'm not going to use it. So it's, it's quite skillful. Then celebrity marketing also become a big challenge in today's China work uh, because you understand there are celebrity fans and there are anti-celebrity fans. I will mention some of the cases and you understand how challenged that could be. Okay, so we are talking about um, kind of typical PR work. Usually we segment it differently. We either call consumer PR or corporate PR, or we use industry PR, or we use uh, some service, scope of service PR. So traditionally PR and ads are really in, in two very different roads. We joke, we say ad is what you pay for. You pay the media a certain amount of money, they publicize whatever you wrote or whatever you, uh, you draw. PR is what you pray for <laughs> because you talk to media. They might not use your sentence. They might have their own opinions. They might interpret your stories in a very different way. Okay, so we say PR has high credibility but it's not 100% controllable. And at the same time, advertising is very controllable, but has a lot of suspicious on it because people know you paid for it, okay? But look at today. Today, everybody is in the same battlefield. We go to pitch with our clients. A lot of times we meet ads companies, we need meet, meet social digital companies. So it's very, very interesting that we are all in the same uh, arena. For instance, the little red book, is it PR or is it ads? Is it social? Nobody can tell. So it does not matter. One of the questions I continue to receive from my client is for this bidding, should I invite ads company or should I invite PR agencies or should I invite social media companies? I say it's it doesn't matter, okay? What you understand is today it's all correlated. Let me show you a video 
In the past, it's typical ads companies work. We call it corporate video. But Rudolfin did it. It, it, it took a, a it, it's a little bit outdated, uh, but I really like it, this video, so I share it here. It's a corporate video by Novartis. And at the beginning, it's for the, for the company image to be on TV. Then because it's so good, it began to show to the internal staff, especially in the orientation. Okay, so this is something I would like to show you and you can tell me whether it's PR or it's ads. It's a little bit long. <laughs> I think uh, Elaine is experiencing some uh, internet issue.
Thank you for your patience. Elaine is uh, Elaine is trying to restart her computer. It's probably because of the video. Thank you for your patience. And uh, I guess feel free to uh, to to put your answer in the chat room about whether this is a PR or advertising or social media marketing. Here we go. We have Elaine coming back. Give me one minute. Okay. It's probably because of the video, Elaine. It's too big. Yeah. I think if people get to the gist of it, maybe we can, you know, Go forward. I think we forward, go forward. Okay. Anyway. Can you see that? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. So basically uh, what I'm trying to say, it doesn't matter today uh, whether to do um, PR or ads or social media, you don't really need to um, discuss about that. All you need to know is what you want. Strategy, creative usually come from ad firm. Storytelling usually come from PR firm. Channels and platforms usually come from media buying firm. That means you will need to work closely together with different agencies and who understand the strategy should take the lead. Okay. 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 So um, I just finished the first part. Sorry for the technical problems. It's about PR. So do you have any question about PR itself? If no, I'm going into um, the most interesting part about the controversial world. I saw two questions. The first question is, have I worked with SOE, uh, SOEs? Yes, I do. And I work with many SOEs. One of the biggest clients we ever work with is Yiqi Dazhong, F-A-W-V-W. And there are a lot of pains and gains at the same time. So if you want to know that, we can talk about it later, okay? So um, when we talk about controversial nowadays, if you pay attention to the magazine, a lot of times people are talking about we live and work in a VUCA world, that means Volatility, including the stock market. Uncertainty, a lot of changes. Complexity, um, sense, a lot of sensitivity, a lot of dif difficult challenges and ambiguity. Nothing is black and white, okay? There are leading force here is the change political power and also the un unfortunately COVID-19 changed a lot of things. The changing um, po political power has pushed forward a lot of things. And a lot of things are actually happening every minute. Okay, I believe recently we paid attention to the cotton story in China. You realize that H&M's statement was made last October, even it was not this year. Okay, Nike's statement was even earlier. It's last March. Okay, from what I know, last March Nike was a little bit, Nike China was a little bit concerned. So they did talk to their global, but uh, later on it seems nothing happened. Suddenly today it become a huge issue. Okay, so everything is changing and there are a lot of reasons behind that. 
And given the uh, power handover in the US, the power handover will happen in the German. There are a lot of things that we should stay close attention, pay close attention to, because this will totally change the business environment and PR will have a major role there. And you also see a lot of gaps, okay? A lot, lot of gaps. The age and the young. In China, the first tier city, second tier city, and third tier cities. And the India has uh, have a totally different beliefs from the Chinese in a lot of different ways. And to bring together the world become even more difficult. And also on the internet, it's very interesting. China has almost a isolated internet environment, but it's like you are, they have every, everything, you're self-sustained. So you don't need something to copy whatever in the outside world, you already have anything, everything. I, I remember my New York team members talked to me about, can you tell me um, what is WeChat? Is it a Facebook, it's a Twitter, as it's everything. You can li literally live on WeChat. Okay, I try to convince them download WeChat and talk to us, it seems very difficult. But at, at the same time that they have their own world. Okay, it seems like two separate world. But when something sensitive happens, suddenly it will become one world. Okay, um, I've monitored that everything that FDA said no, okay, has been traced back to China. Okay, the product recall is, is the best example. If you have product recall in outside of China and you don't have the same product recall here, okay, you got really, really criticized on the social media and in general public. Okay, so it seems like two separate worlds, but it's actually very connected and the speed is hugely is is very very fast so don't think that they are separate worlds they're actually together that put us in a very challenging position in today's world number one your attitude we call global identity who are you what do you believe here are two examples one johnson johnson will stop selling skin whitening lotions due to Black Lives Matter campaign in the US. Okay, this seems like a small problem, but for one of our clients, cosmetic clients, that there is an interesting story going on. A client, L'Oreal, that one day got a call from PRC Media saying that uh, the statement from your headquarters said that you will no longer sell or whitening product you will change whitening to something else. Okay. It seems like only a statement from the headquarters, but immediately China pick up. It creates a huge challenge for the L'Oreal China operation because first there are labor laws, label laws, right? Shang Biao Fa. So whitening products can only call whitening products, otherwise it's illegal. Even if the government say yes to you, it means you need, need to recall all the whitening products, change the bottle, change the labels. So it's a lot of money. Interestingly, when this release was sent out from the headquarters, the Chinese um, team doesn't even, didn't even know it. They knew it from media. Okay, so suddenly this become um, a global issue for them. It's like they said yes to the global media, to international media, but in China, you literally cannot do it. Okay, the second story is on the right. Um, you remember that CK advertising in Manhattan. And it's very interesting that I, I did ask my friend to take a photo and tell me it's not a fake news because there nowadays there are so many different fake news. Then the question is that uh, I, I, and then I asked many friends, how do they like this um, ads or not? I got a lot of negative answers from Chinese consumers as well. It's very interesting, Chinese consumers as well as um, um, Japan and Korea consumers. But it seems it's well received in India, it's not that bad. So now you begin to see every market has a different perception. And because of this advertisement, and because it is so spectacular, and it's so eye-catching, 
I also one question is, it suddenly changed the image of CK in a lot of consumers, simply because one ad in Manhattan. And I asked some of the um, consumers in different countries, I said, will you continue to buy CK? I did receive negative answers. Some said no, some said, I definitely rethink about it. But yeah, sometimes they say, yeah, I have no problem on it at all. So you see, it's a controversial world. And people turn in different countries and in different um, places and different categories tend to have different opinions and quite strong opinions. How should company do at this moment? And there is a more radical one, which is right now uh, is going on, which is the BCI story. As I said, H&M's statement was sent out last October, Nike was last March. But today, look at how big the story is happening in China simply because of the Xinjiang issue. So this story was redeveloped, okay? So when we look at this, one of the questions we are asking, how should company do on this kind of matters? Should they speak out? If they speak out, what will happen? If they speak out in the favor of the US uh, media and US opinions, how should they handle the Chinese media and Chinese general public's opinions? So this become a major question for today's MNC. And also in the past, because one of the question is that uh, usually headquarters will make decisions on their own, then they notice about China, you're gonna do this, India, you're gonna do that. Uh, and uh, uh, because headquarters has already made a decision. Today, look at this. If you made a decision, you make an announcement, what will happen, this will happen. Okay, so the world has changed. It become more controversial and what should we do? One of the question is, should we take side? Yes or no? For companies who want to show an attitude, yes, they, they say yes. But every time you say yes, you should think about there will be a consequence. The second question is, do we still have an opportunity not to take a side? If we say we just keep silent, we don't take a side, would that be possible? In some cases, it's very difficult. <laughs> so if we have to, how? It's not a question for small companies who still uh, work for survival, that uh, we only focus on making money. We don't need to um, think about these big, big issues. But for MNCs, yes. It's a major question for them to think about because they have to survive, they have to operate and succeed in different countries. And when the countries get into battles, what should they do? Okay, here are the typical PR work. Um, everything I could give a lesson on one day, but now we just give you a, a snapshot that you should do. The very important thing is you should have a global positioning system with local interpretation. Local interpretation has never been so important. We all remember between the China US um, talk, the translation, the interpretation has been um, hugely discussed about whether they use the right words to reflect the right attitude. Okay, same here. Local interpretation becomes critical. It cannot be reinvented by your local own because everybody reads English. So it has to reflect what the key message global wants to say, but also adapt to the local situations. Then you should have monitoring and alert systems and it's around the world. Okay, if you have a product record in Japan, you should alert your US team member there is one, okay, because the US market will know over the night. You should have very clear internal communications and control systems because if the headquarter knows the story, the other countries should know. Or if there's something bad happening in France, the China should know because the second day you will be questioned by the media then stay very close with your government, okay? Because they really drive a lot of changes. Mm. I will answer this question, how to uh, evaluate PR firms, because it's a millionaire question, nobody ever be able to answer it, okay? Every, every, agent, every company seems to have a different measure. Okay, 
So if you look at that, these are the fundamentals of all uh, every every guidelines, but there are also one very, very important thing today. Go back to your PR team if they have not yet done so, called topic management. Um, you need to understand what are the key sensitive topics today happening in the world and get prepared for that. For instance, in US, Black Lives Matter, you think it's not gonna impact your China operation? No, it did. Should you have an attitude on that? Your headquarters would probably have an attitude on that. Does that reflect what's going to happen in China? Does that respect the Indian audience? Okay, what would that be interpreted locally? So the topic management means you need to identify the hot and probably probably sensitive topics, not to avoid it. Then to have global positioning and local interpretations. Okay, well, Black Lives Matter is only one. The second, the BCI story is the second one. I believe you will be able to identify a lot of interesting uh, matters today because a lot of things are happening. So this is a major job we need to do today in the PR world. So we call it topic management. And apart from the political forces, culture sensitivity getting more and more important. Again, I use because China is today, uh, uh, we, we have many Chinese, bo uh, Chinese booth members, so I use a lot of Chinese um, case studies. Um, this is actually a, um, this is actually very interesting. Someone said, someone come back to China after uh, March 17, 2020, said, I need to run. I does not want to take, uh, put on masks. And it got really got rages from the Chinese community. community. And I, <laughs> it is a, one of our clients. And then I got a call from the headquarters said, uh, um, he's a Canadian. He might not understand the importance of it. Well, here you have to make a decision. You have to make a decision. Okay. Um, and, uh, this is not, not our client. Our client is another, um, another lady who flew back from the US to China and didn't, ex uh, didn't dis disclose that she's sick. Okay. She was later found sick and got rages of the Chinese uh, general public. Their headquarter in the US called our headquarter in the US and trying to explain why she hide it and saying that it was a simply mistake and she didn't do it on purpose. Okay. We had a lot of talk on that. That's the time to tell them that you have to be very sensitive about the culture difference. You might think it's a minor issue, but here in China, everybody believe it is very serious. Okay. So on the culture side, a lot of things can be taken differently. For instance, Black Lives Matter. A lot of things are not supposed to, to be, a lot of words you have to carefully choose to reflect political correctness. This is not, it, it, it does not have any problem in Japan. Okay, literally they don't care about it. But the Hong Kong issue, while in the West, everybody talk about free opinions. In China, it's really about one China policy and it's critical, okay? And it's a culture that in China, you don't want to um, step on the red lines. And these are all very important sensitivities. And, and you need to be careful on that. This is another very good case in Dodge Gabbana. Unfortunately, Rudolfing was the agency for Dodgy Gabbana Great Show. Okay. And we didn't do their crisis because we think it's unparable, unrepairable. But at the beginning, when they put on this um, video, it's from a goodwill. <laughs> 
I know it creates a disaster afterwards, but it, it was created from a goodwill, trying to show that they are very interested in Chinese culture, but uh, unluckily they choose a Korea, I, I forgot, it's a Korea model, and use the chopstick to play with pizza. You know Doji Gabbana is an Italian brand, so clearly they want to show that the two, two cultures work together, and it's fun, and it's unique. Clearly, they, they are using the so-called Western cliché, to interpret they think what they think is Chinese culture. It offended a lot of people. It offended a lot of people. And there was kind of war on the Facebook, on the Twitter going on. And clearly, the designer got offended and began to talk about nonsense. Then he tried to deny it, saying, not me. It is totally not sensible to the Chinese culture and it creates so much hostility between the brand and the Chinese uh, young consumers and general publics. So finally it turned out into a war. The great show was stopped the night before, before the real show and all the money they put into show was kind of thrown into the water. Today, if you talk about that, that's the time this brand's perception was totally changed overnight. In the past, Dolce Gabbana was considered one of the most favorite luxury brand in China, especially among the celebrities. If you look at the celebrities, they love Dolce Gabbana. They want to wear Dolce Gabbana for their fashion show, for their red carpet, okay? After that, have you ever seen which celebrity wear Dolce Gabbana for their red carpet? No, they will never do it. Overnight, the perception of this brand changed. Okay, so that's the that's what they pay for their unconscious of Chinese culture. So, um, what should we do? I say, please do a not to do list. <laughs> Uh, one of my clients said, I kept talking to my um, headquarters in German, telling them that uh, uh, now this happens, here is the case study, you cannot do this. Now that happens, here is the case study. And uh, uh, you cannot talk about uh, uh, Hong Kong, please do not talk about Tibet, please don't, don't, do not talk about human rights. And uh, they tend to forget it. Then I said, yes, prepare a list of 10 not to do's. Email them officially, tell them here are the 10 not to do's. Well, it's great if you only have five, it's great. But make a not to do list rather than do it piece by piece because in headquarters they're handling 40 markets or together. It's impossible for them to remember everything. But nowadays these sensitivities become more and more in each different countries. So do think about a not to do list and the please make it as short as possible, okay? It should come from key countries back to headquarters and for the global markets because today the world is so small. And some of the countries are more sensitive, some of the countries are less sensitive, but there are different political correctness in these countries. I call it cultural sensitivity and you have to pay attention to it, okay? The third challenge is rumors. And there are so many rumors. In India, there are so many rumors in WhatsApp. My India clients always ask me, what should I do? In China, there are so many um, rumors in WeChat. <laughs> and rumors become news. News become disasters and crisis. So what shall we do? Okay, I'll give you a list, uh, a case. I think that uh, Starbucks did fantastically. Um, the California judge rose that coffee requires cancer warning, okay, because of the one um, con uh, element. But it's California judge and it's in the process, not finished yet. And it's for the coffee industry, for God's sake. Then you got a WeChat blogger saying that uh, this is, it's called Australia Miro, called the biggest scandal of Starbucks. It caused a cancer. It's very easy to happen nowadays, especially on the WeChat bloggers. Simply we call it, uh, we call it right? KOLs, because they need traffic 
they need attention, they need funds. Okay, so what they usually do, they will pick the big brands instead of the industry. The industry does not cause attention. They pick big brands, then they use big brands to attract attention. Then the big brands will be in deep shit. Uh, they love big brands, come up and fight for them. Okay, listen, when you have a fake news like this, the last thing you want is the brand or the big company, especially multinational company, immediately jump into it to have a kosher event, to have a war on WeChat or on social media with that little guy. Because this creates so much traffic that person needs. Okay, so this is very different from the traditional media time. So what did, what did Starbucks do? Did they immediately stand out and say no? Actually, they didn't. Okay. Uh, sorry, I didn't put the name. Okay. I didn't put the second slide. <laughs> I'll tell you now what they did. What they did. They stay silent. At the same time, they send out fact sheet to all the other KOLs, their friends that they made along the road. Okay, telling them what is real. It's an industry, style, uh, industry story going on. It's the California judge who has not yet made the final call. Okay, and what's the scientific ev evidence behind the story? So this actually helped all the KOL to write their own stories, which is different from this scandal and help them to drive traffic. So you see, we call it right? A, a turning point. So after the turning point, because so many people are writing about the good story about Starbucks and uh, they are, they are, the, 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 the KOL is literally lying, it's very, very interesting that Starbucks only come out at the last time to make a very generic statement saying that uh, I give you, I give, now it's time for us to give you the true story it's by the um, California judge. It's for the coffee industry, okay? And it's not a fight between Starbucks and the individual KOL, okay? So it's, it's a very successful story that also tells you in today's world, make sure you make a lot of friends and let them speak for you when needed, okay? Today's communication is different from the past. In the past, we call communication so low performance. The company send out press release with key messages, and a lot of companies, adapt, a lot of media adapt that message, adapt that press release, make a little bit adjustment, and make their own stories. Basically, it's the same story. It's so low performance. And today, it's symphony orchestra, and the company or the brand is the conductor. You will need a lot of friends, KOLs or media, some like the trumpet, some like the piano, some are the violin. They might have different voices, but if, as long as they can speak on your behalf when needed, and you have, you are, if you are a good conductor, you will get a symphony orchestra singing playing for you. That's the time you're gonna have a winning battle. Okay, so please don't jump into a war immediately, especially between uh, one person and a company because the sympathy would definitely go to the little guy. See, that's what happens. Uh, the KOL come up. That's a faster shift of wind, okay. And the four challenge, which is also a very big one, I call it easy love and easy hate. That means, Social media is pretty much emotion driven rather than facts driven. That's especially the warning to lawyers and the warning to German companies who always want to reasoning. Social media is not a platform for reasoning. It's a platform for love, hate, slogans, and beliefs, okay? So uh, what happened is Coke, as well as um, Unilever, a lot of companies begin to say we pull pull back our ads on Facebook and Twitter, especially during the time that Black Lives Matter 
campaign going on because people begin to attack each other on their Facebook account. And because of the Facebook, you can literally see people attacking each other nastily, okay, on the web. So what could the company do? Can they delete them? They can't. If they delete this one, this one will say, oh, you are having a different opinion. Okay, if you delete that one, that one was the same. So whatever you do is wrong. Okay, yesterday they're very happy about you because you say Black Lives Matter. Today they're not happy about you because you say All Lives Matter. <laughs> so it put brands in a very challenging position. What should they do? The love and hate come so easily and quickly. Should we have zero tolerance? Or are we ready to adapt to a world that has, has so many contradictory um, powers? Okay, this is a very typical story, right? You know, um, last year, um, he became the really the top celebrity, literally the number one traffic dryer in China's celebrity uh, world after a show two years ago. Then he became the, uh, the most attacked celebrity last year, after, uh, after February 27th, okay. So you see the love and the hate. Today, he came back to be one of the top celebrity in China. So if you ask me why people love him, why people hate him, it's all only triggered by small little things but was significantly exaggerated by the social media, okay? So sometimes it's even a rumor, might not be true, okay? So what should we do with this easy love and easy, easy hate? Should we all immediately jump in to have a boxing, boxing competition? One, of the brand and the company that needs to remember today is that you need to learn to be tolerant because internet has its own rules. One of the very interesting thing is that internet forgets easily. If it is not a big issue, sometimes keep silent is a good strategy. Well, I mean, keep silent is the decision that you decide to keep silent, not because you are too slow or you're too scared, so you decided to keep silent, no. For instance, I, um, I handled a lot of issues in crisis. I still remember for one crisis, I said, um, the client said, I need to answer immediately. I tell clients, you don't need to answer because everybody will forget it in seven days. The rules shows most of the explosive news on the web was kind of taken out in two weeks, okay? However, if you fight, you might trigger another wave of hot topics. If you fight again, it might, might extend another one week, okay? So sometimes silence is a good strategy, okay? So tolerance, understand when to keep silent. Of course, for some of the issues, very, very serious issues, you cannot, you cannot be silent, but that will be, will be considered irresponsible. But in some of most of the small crisis or small issues, keep silent, okay? Sometimes even that means tease yourself, can be a good strategy. You don't be surprised, uh, don't be surprised. And the last one, today it's an age of personality. See, all these people, they have a personality, they get recognized by the market. If you don't have personality, probably nobody will know you. That's a problem, right? When you want people to know you and buy your products. You have a personality, you have an upside. That means people will probably, there will be people like you. Even there will be people hate you. Your awareness is already there to help you sell your products. However, it, there is a downside. That means when people hate you, this can go really bad. 
Okay. So when you decide, a lot of brand today tell me that they want to build a brand personality. They want to have a attitude. There's, remember, there's always upside and downside. When you decide to play safe, your stake is comparatively low. Of course, there is a downside. You might not start out in the very crowded market. But when you, when you decide to play high, especially on the personality side, remember that you probably you can get very bad as well. Look at Ma Yun. This photo was taken during the Guangzhou World Economic Forum. Okay. Ru Fing, our company is the forum overseas. Um, we, we conducted overseas roadshow. Uh, for Guangzhou World Economic Forum. I still remember in, um, in the literally in the Guangzhou event, including Chinese media, including international media, they are all crazy about Jack Ma. Okay, that's the time that everybody crowded in, try to take some photos and try to ask questions to him. So that's the upside. I'm sure you all know the, you all know the downside, right? His, his speech leads to um, the failure of the IPO of Ma Yijingfu. So there's always the upside and there's always the downside. Yang Li, which is this one, um, this one on the left bottom side, she always criticized the guys, right? <laughs> it's very interesting. Intel used her to speak for one of his, uh, one of Intel's new product. Of course it get attacked it. Then Intel pulled back its ads. So I, I, I kind of asked my friend Intel, when you put on this commercial, you should already forecast, understand there will be people attacking you. What are you thinking? So you should be prepared to have a statement. You should be prepared to have some jokes. You should be able to answer all the criticism or you simply ignore that. Okay, you should have an, when you show an attitude, others will show your attitude back. You should have a strategy response. Clearly they have none. So they pulled down the advertisement. Now it become a joke of the industry. It's like, who? Oh, so you like her or you do not like her? You agree with her or you don't agree with her or actually you don't have an opinion. Okay. So this is something that uh, nowadays we are all talking about. We said, it, oh, it's funny. Then this uh, uh, sunglasses advertisement um, uh, was a great success. They got a lot of attacks because today Xiao Zhan still receive um, attractor attacks. They got a lot of attacks, but the sales went spectacular. They literally sold out the one day sales equal the wholesale of, of, of the sunglasses last year. Okay, so they got a, the huge success uh, in the sales and suddenly a lot of people remember this brand. So that's the upside. The downside is you got a lot of attacks, but clearly they're very well prepared for those attacks. So if you look at the Weibo, if you look at the Timor, they have a response and they have nice and polite responses. They ignore negative comments. So that's how you work with um, today, the, 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 today you understand when you have a personality, the personality can also backfire with you. It's okay as long as you're prepared. So you need to have a guideline, you need to have ambassador guidelines and get prepared for criticism. And you also need to have a clear spokesperson system. Look at this. They are wonderful spokespersons, but unfortunately, I don't see a lot of wonderful spokespersons in China. And a spokesperson needs to be um, clear about the company positioning and messages. They need to communicate nicely and easily with the media and with the general public. They need to have a stories, a lot of stories and slogans handy and they should be able to answer challenging and difficult um, questions and handle difficult situations. So you need to have spokesperson system and you need to have spokesperson training, okay, to make sure that they're good, good people speaking for you. And uh, I even have to work with drama school, Shanghai Xiju Xue Yuan. 
because some of the spokesperson I found they even don't know how to speak Chinese properly in their daily work. Okay. So this is something become more and more important. And when you decide to have a personality, uh, a good spokesperson in today's world needs to have a personality. It, it does not need to be outrageous personality. Uh, it can be an engineer personality, can be an IT personality, but he has a personality, okay? And understand there will always be downside, always be attacks, and be prepared to it. So I just try to summarize all these things together that uh, we all understand uh, what's going on in a controversial world. The most critical issue is topic management. And uh, interestingly, I don't see a lot of companies doing that. All they are doing is scattered piece by piece. This is critical today. Please manage your topics. Be sure the company has a global positioning and has appropriate local interpretations. Make sure the local interpretations are confirmed by the local team, not only the headquarter team, but because it can went really wrong. Okay. For cultural sensitivity, political sensitivities, please send your headquarter a not to-do list. These lists need to come from key markets and need to be circulated around the global countries. Okay. And remember, you are, you are in a very crowded market, so you need to have a lot of friends speaking for you. Okay, do not fight immediately because it can be forgotten overnight or you can use your friend to speak for you and uh, understand the value of tolerance and understand the value of personality and the downside and ensure you have a spokesperson system and ambassador guidelines. Okay, so that's pretty much um, today's content. Uh, let me make a final conclusion, okay. For public relations, what we do, we do perception management. So only two rows. Either we promote a company or we protect a company through a lot of different ways and platforms. Usually require a lot of assistance and endorsements of the third parties. In today's challenging world, it's very different from 10 years ago. 10 years ago, your main role as a, our main role as PR professional is promote, okay? Um, protect become a very reactive muffled. You don't, you, not a lot of companies are good at uh, spend money in protect. Usually they spend all their pennies in promote because that's a flushing, uh, a flourishing market and uh, they throw money, ex expect sales returns. Today is different. Even you did very well in promote. Look at Dodgy Gabbana. They spent. Um, they spent. Uh, if if my, um, uh, my 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 memory is correct, they spent more than um, each one ten million. Okay, they spent more than ten million RMB in their uh, uh, the, sorry ten million US dollar in their Shanghai. They called the big show. But because of this chopstick meets pizza and uh, the language battle on the Facebook, look at what happened. The show was canceled overnight. Okay, so all the money gone. So no matter how much money you spend in promote, if you do not protect your company appropriately, you'll probably lose. Okay, your it's, it's difficult. To, it's e very easy to change perception from positive to negative. One bad accident can change everything. And spend a lot of time, you need to spend a lot of time to change the perception from negative to positive. And usually the recovery road will spend a lot of money. There are exceptions uh, uh, as well. Okay, one exception is the Japan-China relationship, remember during COVID? The Japanese sent medicines and mad masks to China and they wrote Chinese portraits on the packages about how we help each other like brothers and sisters. That changed significantly the perception uh, how Chinese people think about Japanese. Suddenly they think, oh, these people 
okay, I'm not that bad, okay? <laughs> so there are occasions you can change perceptions from negative to positive, but usually that's more difficult. But one accident can change the company from positive to negative, okay? Remember Jing Dong, Liu, Liu, Liu Xiangdong, right? What happened on him? Just one story, it's finished. Okay, so today we say pay more attention to protection. Okay, that's critical. That's critical. And uh, um, protection, you, uh, that's, that's um, let me answer one question from Tim Zhang. You say how to evaluate. How you evaluate a crisis management system, how you evaluate topic management is impossible. Okay, because in crisis management, the best result is nothing happened. The best result is that uh, even crisis happens, nobody know. Okay, that's the best result. Um, so I don't know how, <laughs> how can I evaluate that? And the situations are all different. Sometimes you can prevent, sometimes you can't. Okay, so that's all for my session today. So I leave time for you to ask your questions. You sure now, you're sure now, okay? So you for anyone- I hate this, I hate this, okay. Thank you, Elaine, for a wonderful presentation. Uh, certainly, I benefited a lot from, uh, from this sharing, and I think everyone did as well. So if anyone have uh, any other questions, feel free to raise your hand, and we'll be able to allow you to speak. And as a follow-on benefit for Shanghai-based alumni, I think we're gonna schedule a unofficial coffee or dinner with Elaine another time. Any questions? Tim is saying, nice to do is the best takeaway today. Not to do. Not to do list. She, uh, he, he probably got a lot of headaches with headquarters, I guess. <laughs> I think today is a very good uh, general sharing in terms of what is HR, what to do, not to do. But uh, obviously, you are a PR expert. You've been doing this for, I guess, 20 years almost. Um, so you know exactly what to do uh, or how, how you do it. For us, you know, we probably still need to learn more from you in terms of how to achieve that uh, by no. doing specific things. Um, start from topic management. I think it's not only limited to PR, it's limited to a lot of strategists who work for the company, right? What are the key topics of today's world and uh, um, how, how the company gonna stand for that? Great. Uh, if uh, you don't have any other questions, I guess, oh, Gaolu ah. Gaolu is raising his hand. Uh, I actually just have one question here. Um, I think the, is really, thank, firstly, thank you for the introduction today. I think to manage the people in a social media time is really difficult. But just would like to uh, ask, because I'm more or less in a B2B uh, industries. So um, that's the, uh, PR in a B2B world slightly different or uh, let's see, the focus will be different one? Yeah, that's a great question. B2B is a very different world um, and, and a different B2B is a different B2B world, okay. And usually B2B we call it a very typical targeted communications, okay. So you know the pain point of your target consumers, uh, of your target um, customers and how to build a smooth working relationship um, and how to communicate in a very easy, understandable and acceptable way is what we usually focus on, okay? So give you some um, example. 
that uh, for a construction company who building um, sky, uh, skyscrapers, one of the way, one of the thing that we want their um, customer to know is the new technology they have will, that, that will help the sky, skyscrapers building up more smoothly. So we have, it's interesting that we have sharing sessions on WeChat. It's um, like WeChat service, Weixin Fu Hao. That is registration based. That's for all the advanced technology will be shared with them. And they can answer, they can also share experiences by themselves. They can give case studies, you know, they can make comments and suggestions. That's very targeted communications. It does not need to be uh, very big ones open to the public, but needs to be targeted and effective. So different. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, understood. Yeah. We are our startup in Singapore. Um, with an office in Japan. When is a good time to work with a PR agency? Interesting. Um, it depends on, um, I'm going to be very realistic um, because now we are all alumni. It depends on your budget. If you don't have great budget, the easiest is to find freelancer. There are so many different PR freelancers. Okay, a lot of people like like me, they decide to retire, but they're still very interested in doing some strategic work. So uh, find a good freelancer who can help to foster, build up your strategy first, okay? Then prioritize your work. Your work is to build thought leadership or publicize stories to let everybody know you. It depends on the industry you are in, okay? So the first step is always PR strategy. Find a freelancer to work out the strategy. You can find a good job that will help. Okay. Um, from a PR professional point of view, what do you think of Oatly, the Swedish oatmeal brand doing in China? Sorry, I even don't you don't know yet. <laughs> so I cannot give you an answer if I don't know it. <laughs> Apologize. It's okay. It's fine. It's a, if it's a Swedish brand nowadays, be, 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 be careful. I think Tim probably invested in it. <laughs> that's why he's asking. <laughs> yeah, that's that's right. Why. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's true. <laughs> So, uh, uh, Elaine, I, I probably there are more questions people wanted to uh, ask you. Is there a page where you can leave your contact information in case they wanted to write to you or contact you directly? Of course, you know, most alumni can find you in the WeChat group. Uh, you can find me in my WeChat group, which I call Elaine Shaw. Uh, I also can give, uh, uh, I give, if I answer, type answer, will you see my answer? I can type answer to the yes, uh, yes. to, to team and uh, mm -hmm. leave my email address, okay? Okay, I just signed. So Great. You can see the answer, yeah. Another question is how much budget to work with PR agency? Wow, uh, this is question impossible to answer, okay. Every agency is very different, even with the same scope of work. Okay, uh, for Rudolfing, for instance, Rudolfing in New York, they only start from thirty thousand US dollar per month, and mostly they don't work on project; they only work on uh, uh, retainer. Okay, you, you see, it's a big budget. But for Rudolfing China, uh, if you work in China, we are famous for being uh, expensive. Well, for Rudolf in China, usually we start from um, 10,000 US dollar per month. Okay. That's considered uh, a, a, a baseline. And for some small, small, small agencies that they can even start from several thousand RMB, but uh, don't expect that to, to be a service because if you, if, if you think about the salaries of today's people, you know what kind of level, what level people they're hiring and using. So that that can only be fundamental uh, arms and legs work. And it really depends uh, also on the scope of, uh, scope of service you require. Usually media relations, sometimes they can be mechanic work. 
but the writing um, speeches for CEOs can be expensive. Um, crisis management is usually the most expensive. Strategic making and crisis management because they require a lot of experiences and know-how. Excellent. Thank you very much, Elen. I think That's we all good. very much enjoyed learning from you and we'll continue the session another time. Okay. And, uh, thank you again and thank you everyone for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your holiday.